you know, even if it's scary, right? Like, even if you're scared to feel your feelings, that's okay. That's okay. You're allowed to feel scared. And that's where you start, right? Welcome, Lauren. I'm very excited to have you as a guest on my podcast. How are you today? Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm doing well today. Oh, that's awesome. So my first question is always tell my audience where in the world are you located and one thing about you that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about afterwards. Okay. I am currently living in Delaware and um, let's see, I'm a military wife and I've got two kiddos. How about that? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. So that's <laughs> um, so military wife. Interesting. My husband is a vet, so we have something in common. Um, but we're not talking about military today. We're ta not talking about children necessarily today. We're talking about clearing emotional clutter. Yes. And um, you're using tapping. So a technique EFT, it's also called. Um, for those of my listeners that have never heard of it, could you maybe just give a quick overview what we're talking about? Yeah, so it's called tapping or it's or it can be called EFT and EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. And it's a process that helps you do just that. It helps you to find freedom from your emotions. And I compare it to acupuncture because people are more familiar with acupuncture. So instead of going to an acupuncturist and getting needles put in, this is a process that you can do yourself where you're gently applying light pressure by tapping. So acupressure on certain points of the body. And then you're also adding in uh, sentences and speaking out loud the emotions that you're feeling and doing so helps you to hold space for those emotions so that you can release them and let them go. And, and there's also a lot of science that, that backs it up too. Yeah, um, we get to the science. Just quickly, what I'm interested in is what did you find first? Because I saw on your website, you're doing also Reiki or meditation teacher, yoga, everything. What came first? Like what was your door into this um, uh, emotional and, and spiritual healing uh, realm? Yeah, so my journey started with yoga teacher training. And then being in yoga teacher training, I was around a lot of people that were always talking about energy and different types of healing mm -hmm. modalities. And that led me to Reiki and meditation, and then ultimately EFT. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. It's so fun. It's, it, there's so much. So I used to go to shiatsu, um, which is also made with pressure, just like on a whole body. So um, I don't know exactly whether it's similar or not, but it's it's really interesting uh, for me always to hear how did people get into into these uh, these areas. And you mentioned science and so I had to um, chuckle because when I did the clutter clearing training, my mentor, she always says, oh, this is all BS and, and don't even look there. That is BS, BS. And I didn't believe her back then, but then I don't always need science. But you mentioned there is some science behind it for those who are for those who's important that there is science behind it. Can you can you touch a little bit what science yeah. is behind it? Yeah, uh, Dr. Pia Stapleton is uh, one of the one of the main people who's doing a lot of research behind it, and she did a study that um, that looked into tapping in a group, and it showed that it reduced the amount of cortisol by tapping on these points um, up to forty three percent, and cortisol is the stress hormone, mm -hmm. and so by tapping on these points, if you can bring down that stress hormone, you know, it's gonna take you out of fight or flight and then you're gonna feel calmer and you can think more clearly. And so, I, I mean, for those people that are, are, are skeptical, I get it. I was really skeptical too. Um, you know, I, it, it sounds silly, the idea of tapping on yourself to help you feel better emotionally, but it also, it's also been shown to help with physical issues too. It's been approved by the uh, VA to be used with veterans who suffer mm -hmm. from PTSD. Yeah. Um, and there's, there was a study that was done um, on this group of veterans who uh, they had tapping sessions once a week for six weeks for an hour with a practitioner and um, their, their PTSD symptoms 
were gauged at the beginning and then at the end. Um, and 90% of the people in that group had a reduction in, in their PTSD symptoms at the end of that six weeks. And so if you're someone who's skeptical, I think that's fine. You don't have to believe in this for it to work, um, but you, you do have to allow yourself to feel the emotions. And some people do struggle with that. So if you're not willing to feel your, feel your emotions and acknowledge how you're feeling, then yeah, then this, this won't work for you. But if you're open to doing that, then, um, then the, the possibilities are, are limitless. Yeah, but I do feel like a lot of people have trouble um, allowing or, or allowing themselves to feel their feelings. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I just know when I grew up that you right like we were so not to blame anybody. It was just like the, that's how it was. It was almost like you had to be even keel all the time. So don't don't show any any emotions and I don't know um, how you grew up, but for example, if I would be crying right away, somebody would come, oh, don't cry, don't cry. And even though um, there is all kinds of studies around it that um, if you actually feel your feelings, it doesn't even that take that long and then you feel much better again. I just right. read the book from uh, Dr. Um, what's her name? T Taylor Bolte. She had that um, oh, like yeah. stroke. Mm -hmm. And she says that an emotion evaporates within 90 seconds if you're not constantly with your brain um, mm -hmm. instigated and trigger it again and again. But we're so, I grew up so trained, especially when you're in public, to just suppress, suppress, suppress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what that's what the majority of people do, because we don't like feeling intense emotion. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't doesn't feel good. It's not like the warm and fuzzy. And so then we distract ourselves with something else. Um, and that can work in the short term. But I think we all know that the more that we stuff those things down and don't acknowledge how we're feeling, the more that that builds up and gets mm -hmm. to a point that it's going to come out in some way. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, sometimes that comes out physically, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Like when we're talking about, you know, people are, are familiar with with, with feeling stressed and, and anxious and feeling that in your body, but it's with every type of emotion that, that we can experience that. And so, um, I think, I think when we, when we open ourselves up to wanting to feel better, to truly wanting to heal, you know, even if it's scary, right? Like, even if you're scared to feel your feelings, that's okay. That's okay. You're allowed mm -hmm. to feel scared and that's where you start. Right. Yeah. Um, and so when you're, and when you're tapping, you could say that even though I'm really scared, mm -hmm. I'm, oh, I'm hoping I can do it right. Like, or, or, or whatever com comes up for you or whatever it is that you're feeling and you can use those words. And then once you, once you tap enough, that feeling of fear, that scary feeling is going to reduce. And once mm -hmm. that's been reduced, another thought is going to come up. Yeah. And depending on what that is, you, you follow that and it mm -hmm. leads you down a path um, and oftentimes a path that you never could have imagined that it would lead you down. Yeah. And, um, and, and you can find, you can get to the root of what's really causing you, causing you pain and find some relief from it. Yeah, I can, I can totally see how this, um, could help my clients. Like when we're decluttering, for example, physical space. And I always say like everything starts in the brain. So there's a lot of mental space around, uh, mental clutter around it. And of course, suppressed emotions. And um, oh. so when when we're um, when we're decluttering or we're wanting to declutter, I always uh, suggest we start small and and with something that is not too emotional. It's basically what you just said, you know, yeah. it's like that's my yeah. three principles for successful decluttering. You know, we start small and and so we, they could totally do that. And like you just said, we could say, even though I have a hard time letting something go, I still fully love and accept myself or something exactly. along that line, you know? And and I always say too, it's like decluttering is self-love. So, mm -hmm. and I would say feeling your emotions is for sure self-love because you're giving yourself relief. It's like a, um, a, you're otherwise like a pressure cooker, like you said, and then it may either blow up towards the outside where you hurt people that you didn't want to hurt or if you're like me it implodes more like it's kind of like um yeah so and so you would agree that this would be kind of like a, a good combination that people could yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely um because you know when we 
when we clear when we clear our physical space right we're also clearing clearing our mental space creating yeah. new space for new things to come and uh, yeah. and i mean it's the same thing in your home like when you're able to like get rid of get rid of some stuff then there's new space and maybe you just hold on to that new space but maybe yeah. then you want to bring something something new in and um and i think i think the same thing goes for goes for you know the the emotional the emotional work um as well as any any physical pain that that you're you're holding on to too because there's a lot of like i was saying before emotional contributors mm -hmm. to physical pain and um and it can be really, it can be really uh, powerful and, and create creating that awareness around something that that you might not have known is there because so much is going on in our subconscious mind. And, and this helps us to helps us to tap into it, right? Like if you're someone who really struggles with ho like holding on to things, right? Like I think about my dad. Mm -hmm. and how he like his basement is a cluttered mess of stuff, but to him you know, he can't throw stuff away. And I, and I, I think that a lot of that has to do with how he grew up and they were mm -hmm. poor and, you mm -hmm. know, and he, you know, he can't throw things away. Like that's wasteful. So it's like, you know, hoarding yeah. all this stuff. Um, but like you were saying, you can just tap on, even though just thinking about throwing something away mm -hmm. makes me anxious. Mm -hmm. I'm honoring how I feel. And yeah. you and you can sit and you can stay with that emotion, even though thinking, just thinking about it, right? We're not even doing it, but just mm -hmm. thinking about doing it is is the problem. You start there, yeah. and that's the beauty about about tapping is that it meets you where you're at, mm -hmm. um, and it's not it's not one of those things where you know if you're you're really anxious about about getting rid of something it's probably not not likely that you're going to be able to flip a switch and say a positive affirmation like yeah, i'm going to exactly. clear all my house right like you can say that again and again but if you don't feel it if you don't believe yeah. it or, or are able to embody it that it's just you know lip service and yeah. so instead tapping helps you to really sit with that feeling of anxiety and tap it down as we like to say so that you can slowly move towards that better feeling thought like i have all this i have all this stuff but i'm hopeful i can get rid of some of some of it or yeah. i'm open to the possibility of getting rid of it whatever whatever that next best thought is for you yeah yeah you you touch on something very important because like a lot of people that i come across they they tell me, oh if i could just get rid of everything but but no you don't because if if you you would want you could have done it already it's like when when i come and help somebody it's not that i have to tell them how to get rid of something we all know how to do that no it's it's all this other blockage in between and um when we can go slowly towards it and do little steps that's way more kind to ourselves and i also feel like often when we're suppress these emotions and and don't let them come up then there's a lot of mental clutter coming on top of it no like judgment and limiting beliefs and negative self-talk and oh and i'm so stupid and you know and that comes all and that is that is even worse than like it's like piled and piled and piled all this stuff and we can't just let this all go or you mentioned space like a lot of people when they had a lot of clutter in their physical space they can't handle and i say that with um with like little air brackets they can't handle clean space because they're not they're not used to it they their their nervous system gets all riled up so then again you could help with with honoring these feelings and tapping is just kind of like a, a i see it as a doorway kind of like to to allow ourselves to to feel it yeah exactly and it can be done proactively and it can be mm -hmm. done reactively right yeah. so you can you can use it as a part of like your daily daily process um and then in those moments where you feel overwhelmed or you feel the stress or you feel physical pain then you can also you know break it out and the beauty is all you need is your little fingers <laughs> it's literally yeah. at your fingertips <laughs> that is the awesome part it's kind of self-healing in a way dude and self-soothing and and the, and uh yeah so i th think it's awesome so uh one um question that i have is so when we start doing it and i do some tapping not as often as i probably could and would be good for me um, but how long do you, from your experience, does it last? Like if somebody is now, let's say, tapping proactively every day in the morning, or is there is there like a buildup? Do we get more resilient? Do we get 
Yeah, I mean, I do think I do think it helps with with resilience. And I think that if you are someone that does incorporate this on a daily basis, you're going to be that much more likely to utilize it in those times when you are in the, those situations where you're feeling overwhelmed and, and stressed out, right? Because if it's not something that you're regularly using, and you're starting mm -hmm. to feel anxiety or panic, it's not usually something that you then think of it's you know um mm -hmm. so in that in that way yeah and then like as far as how long it it lasts for it really depends it depends on the person it depends on the issue that that you're dealing with sometimes people have um what's called a cognitive shift you know in in one session and uh notice notice a distinct difference about how they feel about whatever it was that they were tapping on other people you know it can it can it can take time and, um, you know, the slow discovery process of kind of peeling back the layers of the onion to, mm -hmm. to get to the root. So I know that's not always like the most exciting answer, but it really does depend on the, on the person and the issue, how long they've been dealing with the issue, how ready they are for healing, because yeah. sometimes, you know, um, you know, holding on to a belief or, or a thought or a feeling is is something that we are doing maybe not maybe not cognitively but subconsciously to protect ourselves in some way mm -hmm. you know having having all this stuff around you makes you feel safe maybe yeah, right and so definitely. it letting it go might uh, might trigger that or you're not ready to let it go because it feels unsafe and so really being able to explore those thoughts and where those thoughts are are rooted is um is kind of how that process works mm -hmm. and so when you're for example helping your clients mm -hmm. what is a successful way how they can start incorporate that it's like you know like learning new habits that and it, then we do it maybe like all enthusiastically for a day, two, three, and then we fall off the so-called wagon. Right, <laughs> do you right. have uh, some some suggestions like how people can start incorporating that in their daily life so that it does become kind of like a habit so that they are more resilient and that it maybe pops in their head when they're getting really stressed and would need it most? Yeah, I mean, I think that the best way to to start any new habit is to attach it to something that you're already doing on a regular mm -hmm. basis mm -hmm. so if you can brush your teeth and then okay it's time to tap right or mm -hmm. if um uh right before bed you sit up in your bed and you do a couple rounds of tapping before bed right if you just attach it to something else that you're already doing and and that's going to help to help to reinforce it and you know you don't have to feel like you have to do it for an hour you can do it for a couple of minutes and mm -hmm. um you know, oftentimes when I do, I end up going a little bit longer than I thought I would, right? Just because mm -hmm. like, oh, things are coming up or it's mm -hmm. helping or it's helping me to feel calmer and, and you know, it works, it works like that. Yeah, oftentimes, no, we're kind of like resistant or we push it away. It's like going to the gym or going for a walk or whatever. And then when we're actually finally doing it, then, we're, oh, it's actually nice. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden we're doing it longer. It's uh, the human brain or the humans are so funny. Sometimes we're sabotaging ourselves, um, even though we know uh, it would do us good. So um, when people are anxious or stressed, they often um, go to the doctor and they may get pills or other pharmaceutical help. And those usually have this long list of side effects and negative effects and whatever. So I wanted to ask, is there anything that could happen? Like people could be worried that something bad could happen if they do this do you know of any side effects negative ones there there, there really are no negative uh side effects to tapping i would say that if you are some, someone who has known knowingly experienced trauma and you know that that trauma is you know that trauma is coming up for you or you can get triggered and have flashbacks of that trauma i would suggest um definitely doing this work with a practitioner um even if you're new to it, I would suggest doing it with a practitioner because there is um, there is real power in learning how to do this uh, correctly and how to really access the right words. A lot of times people struggle with that. They don't know what to say when they're mm -hmm. when they're just getting started. Um, and so a practitioner can can help in that way uh, of really you know holding space for them and being able to pick out the things that seem most 
most intense. But as a whole, yeah, no, there's no negative side effect. There's there's lots of benefits. Um, it can help with it can help with insomnia. It can help um, <clears throat> it can help with so many things. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, food cravings. It can help with. Um, you know, physical pain, emotional pain. There's so many, so many, so many benefits of it. So I definitely would encourage people to give it a try. If you're the least bit curious, mm -hmm. um, and if you're listening to this, there's probably, I always say there's probably a reason, right? And yeah. uh, always yeah. explore the things, explore the things that might help you because there's no like worst case, there's nothing bad that could happen if you do. Yeah, yeah. So. And I don't know how it is in, 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 uh, there are probably tons and tons of different teachers. So the ones I know is, uh, are the siblings, Nick, Jessica, and Alex Ortner. Yes. And I know, solution, yeah. yeah, having solution. I also know they, they knew Louise Hay and they were, they were, Louise Hay was also endorsing it. I don't know. Do you have other sources where people maybe like, um, can you see it for 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 a change like yeah. because i remember when i heard about tapping the first time and then i saw it it was like but that is weird you know like a mm -hmm. lot of people have this this um reaction i think because we're we're not used to <laughs> have our fingers on our body that right, way. right. Um, <laughs> yeah it is a yeah. little strange at first for yeah, sure yeah. So, um, so I, but i would definitely uh tell people to go to in eftinternational.org okay, okay. um that's a really good good resource and you know there's a there's lots of um there's lots of people me included that do tapping videos that are mm -hmm. that are on youtube so if you're looking to just like see where the points are try it out you know you could try you could you could start there um but one of the most important things is the word that you're using you want to make sure that the words that you're using are truly resonating with you mm -hmm. um and that's where the real change is going to happen and that doesn't always happen when you're following a video and just repeating after yes. what the person yeah, is yeah. saying yeah um, so learning how to really tune into what what words are going to work best for you Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. I, I was more thinking like if somebody just wanted to get an idea um, how it looks, um, because it's like with I, I always say to it's like with clutter, um, you don't hire me to tell you what to do because you you can Google that mm -hmm. you, you kind of um, hire me or you hire you when when we're talking about EFT is to actually find the way that works for you for your specific situation and what you're doing is finding the right words finding maybe the right way to how to start that that works for you and that keeps you going because you're noticing the positive effects I always say like when people declutter um when they're doing it wrong and the wrong again in brackets is when they're afterwards feeling worse than they felt before. So it, yeah. when you do it right, then you actually feel better and um, relieved afterwards. And this is sometimes not something we can just learn from watching a video or reading 7,000 blog posts. And, um, right. <laughs> but just to get an idea um what it's all about that's kind of what i was yeah. thinking yeah totally. and i mean you can definitely come to my website too my yes, website is just... mind sh mind shift with lauren.com yeah and i have lots of videos on there so that you can that you can tap along with and and see how it feels and see where the, yeah. where the points are and learn more about it yeah i just wanted to say tell us a little bit about our your website i think you have also a master class that people can can yes. watch with some five ways of um what was it now i should have write it out five, <laughs> five steps of um of making a change no so you said yeah. i love the title mind shift so yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I have a free master class that's all about tapping that you can get an experience of it yourself, learn more about the science behind it. And you can find that for free at mindshiftwithlauren.com forward slash masterclass. Um, and then I have a five day mindset reset too. And that's also free. And um, it's just a series of tapping videos that you would get in your inbox each day. Um, and, and you can tap along and, and kind of clear things out and, and see how that makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Because then they, they can try it out uh, before they 
um, make a decision and actually um, can see whether it's for them because not everything is for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I do say that in the beginning, when I saw it the first time, I thought it was kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does look weird. And I remember it was when the VA was doing some um, trials with it. Um, that's kind of when I came across it the first time. And I thought it's really weird. I don't know how you get vets to do something weird like this. But um, mm -hmm. I think the more people do it and the more it becomes um, public um, or yeah. more widespread, the easier it's going to be to to for people. Yeah. And I think, too, like a lot of my clients come to me when they've tried all sorts of other things and nothing's mm -hmm. working. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, all right, this uh, this looks a little weird, but. <laughs> let me try it out or or they've seen they've seen a documentary um mm -hmm. that that includes it the documentary heal that was on netflix for a while mm -hmm. was um was was one that that sent people to me because you know they are like oh that's interesting let me look up if anybody in my area does that and they want mm -hmm. to find out more about it yeah so yeah. If, if you're at that point where you tried other things you feel stuck you're you, you want to change but it's just not happening this might be something to try yeah I totally agree. So um, did I not ask something that you think that still needs to be said around this topic? Um, I would just say, you know, that that we all I truly believe that we all have the answers within mm -hmm. our bodies are so innately wise and um, the answers are there. And, and this is a tool that that can help you to access them. And mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of different tools out there that can help you to access them. So continue to explore what you feel drawn to and um, and and keep going for it right because we all deserve we all deserve to feel good and mm -hmm. um and let go of those negative limiting beliefs that that really can can eat away at you we all deserve yeah. to feel good yeah and i can uh, speak from experience that actually even if you're very like grown up like me very mental and and all that when you're actually doing it it's surprising what sometimes comes up you can even think like oh no no i'm fine because you're suppressing it so much mm -hmm. And then you start tapping and all of a sudden you're actually realizing, oh, no, actually, there is something coming up and you feel better afterwards. So, yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And thoughts that ha that have been suppressed as far back as childhood can, yeah. can come up. And and then our, our cognitive mind wants to, you know, uh, make sense of that. And we're like, oh, that's not related. That's not why I'm stressed. You know, yeah, but it's yeah. like, well, that's coming to the surface for a reason. So let's take mm -hmm. a look at it and let's see what comes yeah. up from it. And so it's this process of connecting the dots with whatever thoughts come up. Yeah, yeah. And I find it so it's so important. It's so much it's not there is no silver bullet and there is no magical wand that any of us can just wave and then the whole life is better. It's just another way how we can um, actually get closer to us and uh, to self love and to actually um, make improvements in life. So uh, I'm very grateful that you took the time and talked with me and um, so that I can bring this to my audience. Uh, I yeah, think thank be... you so much for having me. This was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, I think it's really a good addition to when you're going through clutter to add that to it. Yeah, thanks so much, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, Danny.